thank you for inviting me to present this webinar on epigenetic editing. Epigenetic editing refers to the technology of actively overwriting epigenetic marks at any given genomic locus. And as such, the technology promises a unique approach to permanently reprogram gene expression levels. When I started this technology in Groningen, the Netherlands, in 2007, the approach faced much disbelief. To re-express sleeping genes, accessibility of these genes is a prerequisite. And these genes were thought to be located in dense heterochromatin. Therefore, re-expressing sleeping genes was thought of to be irrealistic. On the other hand, epigenetic marks were and are still not generally accepted to actually control gene expression. And therefore, this would prevent us from reaching our goal of muting screaming genes. Well, in this webinar, I will show you that these two dogmas do not hold true. And actually, we can make use of the dynamic nature of epigenetics. Epigenetics provides the cell a way to remember its cell type identity throughout cell division. And if we can make use of this reversible nature and change genome function in a mitotically stable, heritable way, as a simple definition of epigenetics promises, then this would provide us with a very unique research tool. Beyond that, it would also have clinical relevance, as many diseases and clinical phenotypes have been associated with epigenetic abnormalities. And certain journals arose to cover these progresses like clinical epigenetics. So epigenetic marks refer to modifications to the DNA molecule itself or to proteins where the DNA is wrapped around the histones. Epigenetic marks are referred to, for example, as H3K9 trimethylation when um, referring to histone modifications, dependent on the type of histone, like histone 3, dependent on the position and type of amino acid, like lysine at position 9, and dependent on the chemical modification, in this example, trimethylation. Modifications on the DNA molecule generally mainly refer to uh, methylation on the cytosine in the context of CPGs. And this small chemical modification was thought to be a very stable, stable epigenetic mark. However, we know now that there are several other intermediates, including hydroxymethylcytosine. The epigenetic landscape is being maintained by epigenetic enzymes called writers, which write epigenetic marks, or erasers, which can remove these epigenetic marks. And we have increasing lists of these writers and erasers. And this um, um, insights into basic chromatin biology uh, is exploding these recent years. However, it's kind of difficult to address cause versus consequence of epigenetic marks with respect to, for example, gene expression in differentiated cells. And also, order of events are still highly unknown. Despite this, clinical epigeneticists initiated large-scale epigenome-wide association studies. And these studies have yielded putative diagnostic markers. However, again, to identify biological function of these epigenetic mutations is technically challenging. The identification of many epigenetic mutations, however, sparked the interest of pharmaceutical companies. And many inhibitors have now been designed for these epigenetic writers or erasers and even readers, resulting in epigenetic therapies. Some actually got FDA approved, but many, many more are being tested in clinical trials which are ongoing and which are expected to be initiated in the nearby future. However, inhibiting enzymes which act genome-wide might result in unintended genome-wide effects, like the up or down regulation of um, uh, unintended genes, and also maybe it might result in genome instability. Moreover, epigenetic enzymes do affect non-chromatin targets. And this might also result in unintended effects. So I reasoned if we could override epigenetic marks at any given location, 
Then we could start to provide more insights into mechanisms, including cause versus consequence, and also order of events. For the long list of epigenetic mutations, we might start to actually functionally validate the biological functions of these epigenetic mutations. And maybe in the future, we might have a novel avenue to uh, circumvent some disadvantages of the current epigenetic therapies. So the concept of epigenetic editing is shown on this slide. We take catalytic domains of writers or erasers and we fuse these to engineered DNA binding domains, ring finger proteins or the CRISPR-Cas approach, which I will explain in a minute. This example shows you a very simple uh, schematic concept slide. So for this gene, which is moderately expressed and which is controlled by a few repressive epigenetic marks, we can start to modulate its expression by designing DNA binding domains to target this gene. If we would fuse a writer of repressive epigenetic marks, then expression of a fusion protein like this will write the repressive epigenetic marks, and thereby preventing RNA molecules from being formed. We can also swap the writer and fuse an eraser to the same DNA binding domain. And now repressive epigenetic marks can be erased, allowing more RNA molecules to be formed. And of course, this can also be reversed uh, for other writers and other erasers. This animation shows you a little visualization of the, of the concept. So we know that epigenetic mutations can cause diseases by encoding inactive proteins. And next to genetic mutations, epigenetic mutations are associated with disease by inducing abnormal levels of gene expression. And actually, most diseases are associated with abnormal gene expression levels. Excitingly, these epigenetic mutations, like genetic mutations, are being copied with every cell division. And epigenetic editing can mimic these epigenetic mutations by either adding epigenetic repressive marks or removing or activating marks. And in that, that way, we can study the biological relevance of, for example, identified epigenetic mutations. So the tools for epigenetic editing are minimally a gene-targeting DNA binding domain fused to an epigenetic effector domain. And we have a long list of epigenetic effector domains which have been validated to indeed write or erase epigenetic marks, as we reviewed in 2012. The majority of these studies, however, made use of exogenous DNA binding domains, and therefore these require like reported plasmids or uh, integrated transgene constructs to actually determine the effect. Alternatively, people made use of um, uh, human or mammalian DNA binding domains uh, like MECP2 or NF-kappa-B, but these bind known uh, but multiple genes. And actually at that time there was only one study, which uh, one research group, which made, made use of engineered DNA binding domains in this case to target their favorite gene of interest, VGFA.